Hi, this is Kronos with a video on the Bitcoin block size. Ah, the Bitcoin block size. If you have been around the community for a while, you have a headache because we've been talking about the Bitcoin block size for years. But just in case you don't have a headache yet, let me give you a quick overview about what's been going on in Bitcoin. So in 2009, when Bitcoin was first invented by Satoshi Nakamoto, who by the way is not Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, although he makes some pretty good memes, there was no Bitcoin block size then. You could make a block of any size, but the following year in 2010, and Satoshi realized that the Bitcoin network could be attacked in a way. A miner who creates a block could put any amount of his own transactions in there and just make it enormous, like a terabyte, right? And then send that out to the network. The rest of the network would accept the block and start verifying the transactions. Well, it would take forever because it's a huge block and the whole network would just come to a standstill, but that miner could keep mining. So it would be a way to get a competitive advantage against the other miners. Satoshi to fix this, put a limit on the block size of one megabyte, which at the time was no problem at all, very, very high limit. <clears throat> but times have changed. Let's take a look at a graph. This is transactions per block on the, on the um, this is blockchain.info. It's a great website for looking at stats on the, on the uh, Bitcoin network. By the way, I don't recommend blockchain.info as a wallet provider. You can store your own Bitcoins on this website, but I don't recommend that. There are better places to store your Bitcoins, but it's a great place to find stats about the network. So here's the blocks, uh, transactions per block, and you can see just one here. This is actually more like zero uh, because when you mine a block, the very first transaction is called the Coinbase transaction, kind of a bad name, or maybe Coinbase, the company, needs to change their name. Anyway, it's kind of ambiguous, but that first transaction is you receiving the mining reward for mining that block, so there's always at least one. So these blocks are basically empty, uh, and this is 2010 when Satoshi put that limit in place. Well, you can see this growing, 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 quickly growing, growing, growing. Here's the problem. That one megabyte limit has been in the code this whole time, and it actually limits the size of the block to hold maybe 1,500 to 2,000 transactions, depending on the size of the transactions, because transactions can be bigger if they have more inputs of addresses, but that's kind of technical. So anyway, the limit is somewhere up in this range, and you can see these blocks actually start hitting this limit. So you can see here, let me draw an arrow. This excellent arrow going up. This is actually going to start flatlining because of the limitations of the block size. This is bad, in my opinion. It's better if Bitcoin can process more transactions. But there's arguments on both sides of this issue. Some people say blocks shouldn't be too big because then it's so hard to run a node, so hard to participate in Bitcoin because you have to invest more in hardware. You have to be able to process more transactions and handle a bigger blockchain, etc. Other people say blocks can't be too small because then nobody can use Bitcoin. You know, it's the old, no one's going to eat at this restaurant because all the tables are full. It's going to go bankrupt. Well, that's not entirely true, right? I mean, people would have to start leaving and never coming back, but then the problem is solved. But I think it's bad for Bitcoin to be limited in its growth in this way. And I've wanted to produce a video like this for a while, but now I have a reason to do it because there's a project which is poured for putting forward a solution that I like, and it's called Bitcoin Classic. So what is Bitcoin Classic? It's basically a copy of Bitcoin Core or QT. It's the original Bitcoin software. It's just a copy of Bitcoin. So if you run this thing, it's going to run exactly like Bitcoin. But here's the catch. They're putting a change in there to move that limit up to two megabytes. But there's another catch. If some nodes are the old kind of Bitcoin and some are Bitcoin Classic, as soon as the classic ones put out a block that's bigger than the old limit, the other nodes are going to say that's not allowed and they're going to ignore it. And then we have two Bitcoins. That's super bad to have two copies of the same thing because if you're on the wrong one, bad things happen. You don't see a transaction or you think you have money that you don't. It's really, really bad. Anyway, did I say it was bad? So we don't want a bad fork. We only want a good fork. A fork is like the, the splitting of the two networks. So in order to do that, these classic folks say, well, we need to make sure there's a nice big majority before we switch. So they're writing their software so that at least a huge amount, it's a percentage of the network is, that's mining is producing these classic blocks so that when they're produced, these larger blocks blocks are produced, they're automatically accepted by everybody's nodes, or at least everybody who matters. So if you are with Coinbase, they have operate an exchange, or Bitstamp, they operate an exchange, or OKCoin, or many other exchanges, they're gradually coming on board saying, we support this change. A lot of companies are coming on board, like, uh, say, BreadWallet. Have you used BreadWallet? It's a great wallet software for iOS. I use BreadWallet on my iOS device. It's a great, great thing. So BreadWallet has said, we're going to implement this change. But this is getting a little bit political, because if you have some people saying no, and some people saying yes, then it can 
really only go one way. So I'm making this video to say I support Bitcoin Classic. Me, Kronos Crypto. Me. I think you should too. Here's why. If you think big blocks are important, two megabyte blocks are not big, but they're not as small. And it also shows that we can make a change. So if you wanted bigger blocks, I think you should agree to this two megabyte plan. And I think going forward, it is small adjustments from there. But the point is you're breaking out of one megabyte. And if you think that one megabyte is the only size you should ever allow, I beg you to take a deep breath and move that up a little bit because two megabytes is not going to ruin the network. It's going to work okay. I mean, there's a small, a few uh, small tweaks that will need to be made because for example, if you fill the entire two megabyte block with a single transaction that has all of these huge uh, inputs all in one transaction, there could be a problem. So maybe we need to make a limit and say, you can't have one transaction that's baking up the whole block, right? It's not that hard to fix these problems, but we do have to do that. So that's why we've got a team of programmers doing this carefully. So you might think, if you're not a miner, it doesn't matter. And in a sense, well, it doesn't because you can't make Bitcoin blocks if you're not a miner, but you still matter if you're a Bitcoin user. So if you use a Bitcoin exchange, I encourage you to write to them and say, I support two megabyte blocks. Will you please make sure that your exchange will support that change? If you use Wallet Software like Bread Wallet, or say you've got an Android device and you run Mycelium, I've used that. It's a very good piece of wallet software or something else or something else. Or maybe if you use something else, I highly recommend writing to whoever made that software and saying, will you please support these two megabyte blocks? Because I don't want to be using your software and have to use somebody else's because you're not supporting them. So this is my political call to action. Go out there and say, please support two megabytes because we're going there and I don't want to be left behind. Now, if you don't if you get left behind, it's not the end of the world because you haven't lost your Bitcoins. You can still use those private keys on the new network. So nobody's going to have their money disappear. It's just going to make things easier for everybody if everyone is upgraded. If you have any questions about this issue, why don't you write in the comments below the video and I'll promptly delete them because I'm the moderator of this place. I'm only kidding. I'm not, I'm not a certain group of people who moderate like that. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.